And it says they did this by the Spirit of Christ. Isaiah 6, I saw the Lord, right? High and lifted up. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty who was, is, and is to come. Yahweh Adonai. Who did Isaiah see? It tells us, Gospel of John, he saw Jesus. Pre-incarnate, he saw God. 700 years before the incarnation, Prophets were studying prophetic revelation, guided by the Spirit of Christ, and He hasn't even shown up yet. The eternal, the uncreated, infinite Spirit of God. Moving on Isaiah's heart, no differently than moving on yours today. You study biblical prophetic revelation, and you look at the most sacred selected intel any human could have. Nostradamus didn't come close. Edgar Cayce didn't scratch the surface. The New Agers and the writers and the remote viewers and the psychics and even Webbot doesn't come near. Do we understand the infinite, the immeasurable, uh, the uh, indefeatable, indestructible, irrevocable work, presence of the Spirit of God. The same Holy Spirit that speaks inside of you and leads you to witness to someone. The same power that's present to heal the sick. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, dwelling in you. It is He, the Holy Spirit, that can help us track the future. So out of all that I read, and I get to read some of the junkiest stuff, stuff that I get so bugged with, I'm so sick of the darkness. But it's like, expose it, uh, look at it. Uh, I I want you to tell, uh, in heaven no, no doctrine of demon will be read. In heaven there is no breath of hell that will be there. It's going to be quite different. Tracking the future through an infinite lens. The Spirit of God paints the picture. What's Satan going to do? The Spirit of God paints the picture. What is God going to do? The the Spirit of God paints the picture, brings to us the inspiration, and reasons with us concerning what we need to do with our lives. If you believe the Antichrist is five years away, what are you doing? If you believe the Antichrist is ten years away, that means he's alive over in Europe. Please understand one thing in all of this. I I clearly confess to you and tell you, God hasn't faded. Not one ounce of promise, power, or ability, or might, or miracle has gone away. And so it's not hiding in the rafters, waiting for hell to be unleashed, and Jesus to pluck us out. It's fighting on the field like like David and Goliath. See, up in the rocks... Nobody could do anything. No miracle of God shown. Nothing by the seasoned warriors up in the rocks. No visitation of God. No leading of God. Nothing of God in the rocks. But on the ground, in the field, where a little boy challenged a Nephilim. Quite a different story. I don't fear the Antichrist, the false prophet, and all of hell. Best what? Kill you? You've got to die anyway. Unless we're here when the dead in Christ rise and we are alive. Harpezzo! Force! Snatched up! Call it the rapture if you want, but I like the word harpezzo. A catching away by a force so beyond us, it was the force present at the resurrection. It was the force present at the ascension. Revelation chapter 12, Revenel. When the child, the dragon wanted to devour the child... What happened? Snatched up to God. What's the word? Harpenzo. Same word. He didn't make up anything new. God's power snatched. So let's keep looking at the future through an infinite lens. The word of God. You know, you can read all the other stuff, fine. What I read in all of the Luciferic literature and hear from the Luciferic channelers um, is the agenda. And it is the masqueraded, it is the promissory, it is the, uh, you know, the carrot, that illusionary carrot Uh 
out before the donkeys who allow the dark one to sit on them and literally ride their backs into the days that we're about to uh, experience. Let's go to the next one. Tracking the future in the present, well, that's, that's another thing we, we can talk about. If you believe Antichrist five years away, ten years away, then um, where are we right now? What about the two witnesses that will appear on the earth? What about the abyss that will be opened? Well, then that's not but ten years away. Or, you know, there's so many things yet to be experienced you know, in this world. The worst is yet to come. The um, ramping up of the demonic side is going to be beyond any measure in human history. Do we get this? Mm -hmm. Corresponding issue is this. The destructive presence brings physical, economic, environmental, human destruction. Read the four horsemen if you want. White horse, red horse, black horse, pale horse. Prophetic Spirit of God, prophetic pictures, drama in prophetic form, declarations of a sequence of events. It begins with the white, spirit of Antichrist, Antichrist, all that involves the counterfeit. It moves on to the red, a burst, peace taken from the earth. Men slay each other worldwide. Greek word, not one of war, but one of animal, human Sacrifice, butchery. Read the black horse, scarcity. When all hell breaks loose and governments collapse and the economic streams all dry up, banks are closed, nobody can get on the internet, nobody can turn a light on. Well, what's the world going to do? Scarcity, economically, food-wise, you know, there's a battle going on. And it doesn't end because of pale horse. The Spirit of God gives this picture to John. John, it's all inscripturated. The Spirit of God's there to illuminate it to us and, 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 and move us by this. And it burns my britches to see a, a, a pale horse. But it's not the pale horse. It's what it represents in the communication of God. Death and Hades are the riders. One-fourth of the human race will die. By sword, biblical word for warfare, by famine, by pestilence, and by the beasts, the theron of the earth. I don't believe it's hamsters and giraffes that's going to attack humanity. I don't believe that it's going to be horses and alligators coming out of the streams, killing, what, two billion people? Now, the Old Testament study when it comes to wild beasts many times does refer to real animals but it also refers to demonic infested tribes and nephilim tribes beasts this massive revelation and so in the future when one fourth when a couple billion people die in a very short period of time by sword of war by going without food dying without food by the pestilence and all that's in occurred there but then there's one more thing beasts of the earth and so the study right now and it's a good study it's not wild it's not crazy will the nephilim return what about the back breeding of nephilim what about the genetics of nephilim why did hitler want it so bad why did stalin want to crossbreed monkeys with humans why is there a concept of splicing genes from animals into humans? Why is there an understanding among deep Luciferians of charged Nephilim blood spliced into humans today to transmute them into some kind of superhumans? The Theron will be involved in a fourth of humanity's death. And uh, by speculation I can give you, well, I can tell you what I believe, they're on the earth already. Yes. Please understand the secrecy on a human scale would be off the charts, but we're talking about supranatural laced secrecy. Isaiah was a great prophet. There in Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Ezekiel was a great prophet there in Ezekiel 8. But he didn't know that in his town, in the city of God, in the caverns, was a long historic serpent worship with the sacrifice of humans 
the writings of occult literature, the twilight languages, he didn't know. A great prophet, Spirit of God guided. Who knew? But it took God to move Ezekiel, who was willing, create a supranatural hole into the substructure of radical evil. And he saw what God knew was there. It was detestable. It was unthinkable. It was, uh, why do you think it's hidden like that? And I'm going to tell you tomorrow, I'm going to tell you boldly tomorrow, that in every city in the United States, in every township, historic, satanic rituals of the same order have been going on. Amen. 500 million is the lowest possible number I will give you. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. And I think that... Uh, Biblical prophetic revelation causes us to see into the future and then think through the ramifications. How do they build an army that big? How do the, uh, how do the Theron, uh, how do they get onto the field and help kill a fourth of humanity? 